In the 1980s, Jiang Zemin sent his eldest son Jiang Mianheng to the United States to study, get his green card, and keep watching on the development in China. In 1992, when Jiang established complete control over the Chinese Communist Party, the Chinese Communist government, and the army, he immediately summoned Jiang Mianheng to return, and take advantage of his power to make huge fortunes in China. Thus, Jiang Mianheng brought his wife and son back to China. In January 1993, he began to work as a regular researcher at the Shanghai Institute of Ceramics under the Chinese Academy of Sciences. It raised many eyebrows that he became the head of the institute in just four years. Jiang Mianheng was doing business while keeping his job at the institute. In 1994, he bought Shanghai Joint Investment Company, worth over 100 million yuan, for the incredibly low price of only a few million yuan borrowed from a bank. This was how Jiang Mianheng started his telecommunications empire. The company was founded by a Mr. Huang, a vice chairman of Shanghai City's Economic Committee, after spending a lot of time and effort. But after founding the company and running it for only three months, Huang was transferred back to the Shanghai Economic Committee, and disappeared ever since. Next, Jiang Mianheng suddenly landed the position of the president and general manager, as though he came down in a parachute. As a result, he suddenly became the king of telecommunications in China. Being Jiang Zemin's eldest son, Jiang Mianheng has both money and power in his pockets. Therefore, his business is guaranteed to be a huge success. Overseas Chinese and Western entrepreneurs, including Yahoo co-founder, Jerry Yang, were eager to do business with him. In a few years, Jian Mianheng built a giant telecommunications empire. By 2001, Jiang Mianheng owned the Shanghai Joint Investment Company, and had controls over 10 other companies through stocks, including the Shanghai Information Network, Shanghai People Network, China Network, etc. He runs a wide variety of businesses, such as cable, electronic publishing, DVD VCD productions, and broadband networks for online businesses. Jiang Mianheng is president of numerous companies, and had businesses in nearly all of the most prosperous industries. He's even in the top-level management of Shanghai Tunnel and Shanghai Subway. Even Shanghai Airline made him one of its directors. According to a businessman in Shanghai, Jiang Mianheng is not only China's king of telecommunications, but also the head of the underworld society in the Shanghai Triad. Success in business did not satisfy Jiang Zemin and Jiang Mianheng, after all, successful businessmen in the history of the Communist Party were vulnerable without a higher position in the Chinese Communist government. As a result, December 2, 1999, Jiang had appointed his son to be the number two figures in the Chinese Academy of Sciences. The high-profile annual Fortune Global Forum was held in May 2001 in Hong Kong. Jiang brought leader of the state, Jiang Mianheng, to the forum, and introduced him to some of the wealthiest and most powerful people in the world, especially those wealthy businessmen with multinational businesses, who wanted to expand the family's empire. On the next day, when China's application to host the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing was approved, Jiang Mianheng signed huge business contracts with these wealthy men. By then he had become the number one embodiment of the commercial bureaucrats. Jiang Zemin ordered China Telecom to be divided into Northern Telecom and Southern Telecom, then gave Northern Telecom with its fixed assets in 10 northern provinces, to Jiang Mianheng's network for free. Jiang Mianheng put the network through merger three times, and cancelled them later, so that he swept the company's assets into his own pocket before the stocks were publicly traded. People who bought the stocks ended up holding the bags. In September 2000, Jiang Mianheng and Wang Wenyang, the son of Wang Yongqing, the wealthiest businessman in Taiwan, announced to start Grace Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation, as a joint venture with a total joint investment of 6.4 billion US dollars. But Wang Wenyang stated that he did not invest a penny. It was Jiang Mianheng who came up with all the money for the investment from the bank. Jiang Mianheng capitalized on his father's power, and became filthy rich. Zhou Zhengyi, known as the wealthiest real estate magnate in Shanghai, was arrested in May 2003 for collaborating with government officials, to steal private lands. The investigators discovered that Jiang Mianheng had stolen a large pack of land in Jingan district. He and Jiang Mianheng were even more wicked and cold-hearted than Zhou Zhengyi. They forced the residents out of their private properties, and did not compensate them at all. Shortly before the CCP's 16th Congress, Jiang Mianheng inspected the No. 502 branch of the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, 
and watched the demonstration of searching the keyword Jiang Zemin on Google, never expecting that three out of the top ten hits in the search results would describe Jiang's crimes. Moreover, the first article in the search results had the headline Evil Jiang. Jiang Mianheng was both shocked and angry. To completely deny the Chinese people's rights to obtain overseas information about democracy, human rights and freedom, especially overseas information about Falun Gong, Jiang Mianheng began to accelerate the efforts to filter the Internet. He was responsible for developing the Golden Shield project to completely control the Internet and monitor people's access to the Internet in China. The initial investment in the Golden Shield project alone totaled 800 million US dollars. Under Jiang Zemin's reign, Jiang Mianheng had become the head supervisor of the network police. 